welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my induction story and it is a positive one. I'm doing this video because I hope it will bring some comfort to other women out there who are possibly going to be getting induced soon because I know when I got informed I was going to be being induced I watched a lot of people's videos on here, the good, the bad and the ugly. It definitely brought me some comfort so I'm hoping it will bring other people comfort as well. Just a little heads up, I have got everything written down, so if I do look down, it is just purely because I'm just reading my notes, because I want to make sure that I've got everything to time scale and detail for you. I didn't want to miss anything out, so I have got everything written down. Anyway, let's get on with the video, because I don't want to do a really long introduction, because it is going to be a long video as it is. So let's get on with it. On the 24th of November 2019, I ended up in the hospital for my second episode of reduced movement. I was 37 weeks and 3 days pregnant and if you are pregnant at the moment or are a mum, you know reduced movement during pregnancy is a scary time. So I went in the hospital to make sure everything was okay, I got hooked up to the machines, had some cold water and then little Miss Natalie started moving about like crazy. She had a lovely habit of making me worry for nothing. So I left the hospital but I did have to be booked in to have a scan. So on the 2nd of December 2019 I was booked in to have my scan. At this point I was 38 weeks and 4 days pregnant. Natalie was measuring quite small, she was measuring at 5 pounds and 12 ounces but they weren't overly concerned about it, they did just make me aware about it. So after having the scan I had to go and speak with a consultant and the consultant decided it would probably be best to induce me. Just because I was classed as full term, because so I'd gone past the 37 week mark so you are classed as full term. And he just decided it would be better for me to be induced and bring Natalie into the world. So he looked of when to be able to book me in. I was expecting it to be a week maybe or a few days away. But no, he turned around and said, we can book in for tomorrow. I was like, oh, okay then. So on the 3rd of December 2019 I called the hospital at 7am like I was told to see when would be best for me to come in and start the process. So they told me to come in at half past eight. So what I did was I called my mum, let my mum know the plan that we were going to get everything ready and I was going to come and get her for about quarter past eight to be at the hospital for half past eight. So I got myself ready, had something to eat and we went and picked up my mum. So we got to the hospital at half past eight and we were told, because it was me, my mum and Tony, and we were told that only one of them was going to be allowed to stay with me during the induction process, but they could both be there for a little while while I all got settled. And they both stayed with me while I got myself settled and got myself sorted. So, Tony then left after being there for about 10-15 10, 10, minutes. So then at 8.50am, again we are still on the 3rd of December 2019, I had to have my first induction at 8.50. I was dilated one centimetre. So I actually had the gel put in. I didn't have a, um, a pessary or a hormone drip, I had the gel. So they did the first lot of gel and then I went on the monitor. So I went on the monitor for an hour, everything was okay, nothing too untoward, just checking obviously baby's heartbeat and my contractions if I was having any. Which I did start to feel a little bit of pain, probably about half an hour after coming off of the monitor I did start to have some little niggles and little tightening but nothing major and it all sort of died off so I didn't think much of that and then at 11 30 Tony arrived at the hospital because he was going to take my mum back home so she could get some work done because she was working from home during the whole situation with being induced 
So she went home, did some work and Tony stayed with me. So we went for a little walk around, bounced on my ball because that's what the midwife suggested, kind of let gravity do its thing. So that's why we went for a walk. Um, I had some lunch and nothing else was really happening. Nothing was really going on. So me and Tony just sort of chilled. He was on his phone. I was laying in the bed having my lunch. And then at two o'clock, Tony left to go and pick my mum up to bring my mum back up because I was due to have my second examination. So Tony left, went and got my mum, brought my mum back up and then me and my mum were just sat about waiting for them to come and examine me. So I was due to have my examination at 2.50 because it was supposed to be six hours after my first lot. However, there was a lot going on, so I didn't actually get seen for my second examination until about half past four. So I had my examination, I had dilated about one and a half near to two centimetres, so I had my second lot of gel and then went on the monitor for an hour again. However, this hour actually turned into nearer to two and a half hours, so I was on the monitor from 4.45 until quarter past seven because things had really started to kick it up a notch my contractions were becoming very close together and very painful we then at this point found out that natalie was actually laid back to back so that's what all of my contractions were in my back so i was in a lot of pain because of this and with every contraction i had i would move and jolt so then the monitor would move so we weren't able to get a steady baseline of Natalie's heartbeat. So this was causing issues because they didn't know if Natalie was in distress or anything like that. During this, Tony came and arrived at the hospital for 6.30 because that's when visiting started. So during visiting time, both my mum and Tony were allowed to be there. So because at this point we were struggling to actually get a baseline for Natalie's heartbeat, there was discussion of an emergency c-section my mum me and tony really did not want this my mum knew how much i didn't want to have a c-section i'm sure all pregnant women say that they don't want a c-section and i completely understand but for me it was a major major fear it was something i really didn't want so my mum was determined to do anything she could to prevent this from happening so she was holding the monitor on me to keep it in place and Tony was rubbing my back to help ease of these contractions so at half past seven we finally managed to get a baseline of Natalie's heart and they were all happy with it they could see she wasn't in distress it was just a case of with my contractions being as painful and as sudden as they were it was just throwing everything off but because of my mum holding it in place we managed to get a baseline so I was able to be taken off of it which I was very happy about <laughs> so then at 7.45 I really needed some fresh air at this point it was getting very hot and stuffy in the hospital I'd been on that monitor for two and a half hours in a lot of pain I just needed some fresh air and to just get away from it and get out of the hospital for a little bit of time so I went out had a little bit of fresh air went back upstairs with my mum and Tony still and went back and relaxed on the bed after having a bit of fresh air so at half past eight Tony then went home because visiting did actually finish at 8 p.m but due to the issues of obviously having to be stuck on the monitor for as long as I did the midwives did let Tony stay for a little bit longer, which I'm very thankful because I did definitely need both my mum and Tony there during that time. So once Tony had left, my mum decided to get me in the bath to see if this would help ease my contractions a little bit and help with everything. So I went in the bath at about 9pm. This definitely did help, even though I was still having contractions in the bath, soaking in the water did help a lot. I then started to get a bit hot again and a bit just like, I don't don't think I can stay in here much longer. So my mum helped me out of the bath. This is going to sound a little bit strange and a little bit TMI. But I sat on the toilet because I thought I needed to go to the toilet. I then suddenly got the urge to push. My mum said, did you just push like unsure? And I turned around and was like, 
yeah, but I didn't mean to, like, as if I had done something wrong, which clearly I hadn't, but I just didn't know what was going on. So, I then went back to the bed, and at 9.50pm, I had my third examination. I wasn't actually due to have it until half past ten. However, I told the midwife I'm having urges to push. She then saw me have a contraction and saw my legs shot up to my, literally, to my shoulders without me even doing anything. I couldn't stop it. It was just my body doing its own thing. She was like, okay, yeah, we better check you over. So they examined me early and I was five centimetres dilated. So a lot had happened in quite a short amount of time, really. So they were like, yeah, we're gonna have to take you down to delivery. So they're sorting me out and getting me on a wheelchair because I just couldn't have faced walking. My contractions were so close together and so intense and painful. They got me in a wheelchair while my mum was packing up my stuff, getting my bag, and also on the phone to Tony to say, you need to get back to the hospital, it's time. So I got down to delivery at about 10 o'clock. I got set up in the bed in there and they then had said I was nine centimetres dilated. So literally from the time it took me to from the induction ward down to delivery in a lift, I was nine centimetres dilated. So it happened pretty quick. I was actually worried that Tony wasn't going to make it in time. However, at quarter past ten, Tony got there. He came straight in, obviously made him aware, nine centimetres dilated, it's happening pretty quick. And then by 10.45, I was fully dilated and it was time to push. I had gas and air as pain relief. Originally, I did want a water birth, but there was no way this was happening. It was all happening way too quick. Natalie wasn't waiting for anybody. So I had gas and air to help relieve of the, the pains of the contractions. And I started pushing at 10.45. At 10.58pm, Natalie was born. So it was a very, very quick labour. And the actual pushing process was very quick. But I think I surprised myself, my mum, Tony, his family, and even the midwives didn't expect it to go as quick as it did. They thought, oh, they've got someone coming down at five centimetres dilated. We've got time. They did not have time at all. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about the bad, like the bad things that happened after. So I had Natalie. It all happened very quick. So I lost quite a lot of blood. During my pregnancy as well, I did actually end up getting piles. So with me pushing, unfortunately, when I shouldn't have been pushing, but I have no control over it. And then with the actual labour, my piles did actually come out. So that created a lot more blood. Therefore, I was unable to push out the placenta. So I've actually had to pull that out herself just because I'd lost so much blood. They didn't want me to push any more that was unnecessary so they didn't do that so we're on to obviously the very early hours of the 4th of december 2019 so at 12 a.m my mum got a taxi home and let me tony and natalie have a little bit of family time so i went and had a shower and had a little bit of a freshen up natalie had been i'd fed natalie as soon as i gave birth we did the skin to skin I fed her for a good 40 minutes and she was asleep having cuddles with her daddy. Then he put her down and I just relaxed. He went and had a celebratory fag and some fresh air because it had all happened so quick for him as well. I then waited for him to come back and keep an eye on our little girl and I went and had a shower. I needed a freshen up. I didn't want to wait or anything. I needed a freshen up as soon as I felt up to it. So I did. At 2.30am we finally went up to the ward because at this point I felt felt a bit better to be able to go up to the ward. Obviously it was very early hours of the morning and there was another woman and her little girl on the ward with me. So Tony didn't stay for very long. He literally just let me get settled, got me in bed, gave me a kiss and he went. The reason I didn't want him to stay at the hospital was because I wanted him to get a good night's sleep to be able to come back and help with looking after me and Natalie 
and also to be taken us home. So I asked him to go home, get some rest and come back. And then at 3.30am I finally managed to get to sleep. It's a very strange thing after having a baby. It's a strange feeling. You have all of this adrenaline, but you're also really, really tired. So you want to sleep, but you're also on this massive high of that you've just done this amazing thing. And if you don't want to sleep, that's fine. Just you know your body, so go with whatever your body says. I probably shouldn't have had a shower as quickly as I did. But I had so much adrenaline, I thought I was Wonder Woman, so I went and had a shower straight away. <laughs> and then at 7.30am, 730, 730 the midwives then come round to check we're all okay and obviously give us any pain relief. And believe me, I needed the pain relief. It was only paracetamol, but it was fine. It took the edge off and that, that was all I needed. So then I just spent a couple of hours, just me and Natalie, just bonding and just watching her sleep because that was pretty much all she did. She just slept and just fed when she wanted. She didn't feed that much, to be honest, but I still tried. At 10 a.m. my mum came up to the hospital to keep me company and obviously come and see her granddaughter properly this time. We had a cup of tea together and just sat and just chatted she had cuddles it was just just what I needed and then at 11 30 a.m Tony came up he'd had a good amount of sleep and decided it was time for him to come up and see his daughter and me however you were only allowed one person at a time so my mum stayed for a little bit while Tony was there because we did have a woman from the bounty company come round and take some newborn photos of Natalie so my mum and Tony stayed for that then my mum went home. So then again, it was just me, Tony and Natalie having our family time and just talking. And I tried to get a little bit of sleep while Tony just looked after Natalie if needed. Then we had her top to toe check. They came and checked me. I also had to have an anti-D injection because I am a negative blood type and Natalie was a positive blood type. So it had no effect on this pregnancy, but however, if I do decide to have children in the future, our blood types will sort of have a fight in my body. So that's why I needed to have an anti-D injection. So they did her top to toe check. She was perfectly fine. I was fine. She was feeding well. So they were quite happy for us to go home and start our new life as a family of three instead of a family of <laughs> so that was at quarter past three we packed our bags and we left the hospital with our new little bundle of joy that was my induction story i hope it helped any of you mums to be out there who are going to be getting induced um the only thing is i'm going to give you a couple of tips so i found don't stress don't worry I know it's easier said than done but trust me if you relax and let your body do what it needs to do your body was designed to do this it knows what it has to do so relax breathe and just enjoy every minute of it and as soon as that little bundle of joy is placed in your arms all the pain and discomfort you went through for nine months Plus the labour completely goes out the window. You don't think about it. All you think about is this amazing, precious little thing you've got in your arms. And it is the best feeling in the entire world. So, honestly, just relax, breathe, and you'll do fantastic. I'm sure you will. And also, if you have a birthing plan and it doesn't go to plan, don't stress or worry about it. I really wanted a water birth in a birthing pool with relaxing music and dark dim lighting and just all of this and I got none of that. Was I disappointed? No, not at all because at the end of the day I've got my little girl, she's happy and healthy and that's all that matters. So that's everything for this video i really hope it helped you if you have any comments or questions 
pop them below and I will do my very best to answer them for you. And that's all of it. Thank you and I'll, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks guys. Bye.